Welcome back to Comic Storians, complete stories about your favorite comic book storylines. So while we're going through making the scripts explaining what Final Crisis is and what the Infinity Saga is, we're going to kill a little time by explaining to you what happened in the Arkham War from Forever Evil. Ever wonder what would happen to Gotham City if Batman just wasn't there anymore? Well this tie-in series explains that very concept. Things begin with the Penguin making himself the mayor of Gotham City and dividing up the city to different Arkham inmates. But Scarecrow isn't too happy with this idea, so he tries to get the support of other Batman supervillains by letting them know about a war at Blackgate that is coming. No one knows what this war is about, but through all the research that Scarecrow does, he learns that the impending uprising at Blackgate is going to be led by Bane. Bane has escaped from his prison and is on his way to Gotham to take control of it now that Batman is out of the picture. It is then revealed that the remaining Talon Super Assassins are being kept on ice beneath Blackgate, and that's what Bane is coming here to get. For those of you who are unaware, the Talon Super Assassins are a super assassin organization run by the Court of Owls, another villain that has been recently introduced into the Batman lore. Now Scarecrow decides that if Bane is coming here to rule Gotham, the supervillains can't fight amongst each other, and he tries to get every villain, Penguin included, on his side. But Scarecrow finds out. Penguin is already ready for war, and he blows up every entryway into Gotham City just as Bane begins his assault on the city by attacking the police department. Scarecrow and Manbat then go to Blackgate and they try to get the frozen Talon assassins out of Blackgate while Bane is being stalled by the Penguin. But Bane makes his own deal with the Penguin, and when he finally arrives at Blackgate, he sees that all but one of the Talons has been taken by Scarecrow and Manbat. But that's not his goal anymore. He'll get the Talons later. His goal is to get the Emperor Penguin and bring him to be punished by the Penguin. Long story short, the Emperor Penguin was originally welcomed into the Penguin's gang during the death of the family event. He then declared the Penguin dead and was trying to take over the Penguin's gang while the Penguin is in prison. So Bane delivers the Emperor Penguin as per his deal with the Penguin. And the Penguin tells Bane that he won't be able to succeed as the new Batman because the villains don't fear him like they did Batman. So Bane comes up with an answer. He's just gonna be Batman. If they fear the Bat, he'll be the Bat. So he makes himself a Batman costume, and he sets off to get the rest of the Talons freed and working for him. So Bane and the one Talon that he did manage to recover get to work fighting against all of Gotham's criminals to instill a sense of fear into the supervillains of Gotham. Because he's fighting against the criminals of Gotham, the citizens of Gotham then begin to rally around Bane and his Talon assistant, and he offers them a safe haven from the fighting at Wayne Tower. Bane has his own plans though. He's not just trying to save the city as Batman. He wants to give the city to the Court of Owls in exchange for use of their Talon assassins. But the Scarecrow doesn't want that to happen, and he has his own plan. So he begins to wake up the other Talon assassins and gas them with the fear gas and then mind control them with the Mad Hatter's tricks. Okay, so now we have Talon assassins going everywhere. So this is going to get confusing explaining who's who. So from here on out, we're going to refer to Bane and his assistant Talon as Bat Bane and Talon Robin. So the war continues as the Talon assassins of Scarecrow attack Bat Bane and Talon Robin. But luckily, Bat Bane injures the Talon assassins enough that their regeneration abilities begin to kick in, wiping the mind control from the Scarecrow away. Scarecrow begins dousing all of the Arkham inmates with small doses of Bane's venom so they'll hulk out and be ready to defend him. The venom dosed inmates then attack Bat Bane and Talon Robin, and they win the fight, dragging Bat Bane to Arkham to meet with Scarecrow. But there's a problem with the Venom for any of you guys who don't know. If you don't receive regular doses of it, it'll begin to wear off. You'll become your weak and flabby self in no time. And the moment that it does begin to wear off, Batbane wrecks the inmates! Then it's just Batbane and Scarecrow. Well, you can imagine who wins that fight. With Batbane having won the war, Penguin arrives to congratulate Bane and offer his help in exchange for all of the prisoners in Arkham. Penguin has decided he's going to rebuild his game. Bane agrees, but he wants to keep the Scarecrow. Penguin can have everybody else, but the Scarecrow will be strung up and hung between the buildings of Gotham to show who is truly in control of Gotham now. So things seem to be going well for Batbane, don't they? He's in control of Gotham, has access to all of Gotham cut off, and the police are pretty much disposed of at this point. Boy, sounds just like the Dark Knight Rises movie, doesn't it? Well, once Forever Evil ends, Batman returns, and after a rather awesome single-issue fight, he defeats Batbane, and he locks him up. And then Batman and Commissioner Gordon work to rebuild Gotham. Boy, 
That was a fun ride for Batbane, though, wasn't it? All right, we'll just call him Bane from this point out. And on that note, I'm Infected Crow of Comic Storian, and I'll see you guys next time here with more in-depth storylines that we're working on. Thank you for taking a little jaunt into a fun little side story in Forever Evil with me, and I'll see you guys next time.